Hey everyone, I've been in tech for six years and this is what I learned. Hey everyone, so my name is Krishan. I'm a developer advocate now, but I was a web developer, front end engineer, front end developer for about four to five years of my career. And after being in tech for six years, I've learned a lot of things, not just about technology, but I've learned a lot about myself. And I've also learned a lot about how the tech industry works. And so in this video, I wanna pick out maybe three to five things on what I learned, and hopefully that can help you and make a decision if you should become an engineer in tech, or join tech, or why you shouldn't join tech. Let's get into it right now. Okay, so number one, this is all from top of the head. No script, I just press record, put on my sweater, and I'm starting to talk to you right now. So number one, the first thing I learned about being in tech for about six years, I think I need to emphasize this a lot, is that you never stop learning. I remember when I just started learning code, thinking, okay, I'm gonna study my ass off for like three years or so, and after three years, I'm just gonna cruise. No, technology is always changing. When I learned code, jQuery was a thing. And then one year after jQuery, after learning jQuery, React was a thing, right? Then after React, I moved to backend development. I knew PHP and Laravel. And then it was like, all right, PHP Laravel, going down the drain, learn Node.js, learn the Mern stack, or move on to Python, now I'm doing Python. So things change very quickly in tech. You're always learning, but the thing is, the more you continue to learn, it's not like you have to like study three hours a night every day to learn and keep up with the tech industry. Dedicate time here and there throughout the week, maybe two days of the week, if not three, one day in the week, whatever, to keep learning new code, what's out there to keep your skill up there, up to par, and you'll continue to make better and better money. Secondly, number two, I think this part's also really important. I'm blown away by my income right now, my total compensation right now. Number two, you are more valuable than you could ever realize. The value you can bring to a company, they don't know it, but you do. Your job is to show them and to prove to them what value you bring. And depending on the value you bring will help determine how much income you could receive from that company, if that makes sense. Please understand this. I was laid off during the pandemic, okay? I was laid off during the pandemic when I was working at my second developer job in Irvine, California. I was laid off. I was making $70,000 a year there, which is peanuts compared to what I'm making now. I'm not trying to talk down to people who make that. I'm just saying for myself, what I make now compared to before is a world of a difference, okay? The thing is though, at that time, I thought the most I would ever make in tech was like 90k a year. That's it for the rest of my life. And I was accepting that. Okay, I'm gonna remain a 90k a year, live in California, making 90k a year in California is still poor. Well, I went from making 70k a year to getting my next job at New Relic, paying me a total of $160,000 base salary plus bonuses, stocks, RSUs, which went up to $183,000 a year. Okay. Then I went from that job, right, to where I am now. I make much more than that. I don't wanna say how much I make in my new job because I still work here. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. My first job paid me $45,000 a year in tech. I make more than five to six times that amount in tech right now, okay? I'm not doing all the math from here. I'm saying, I think it's about more than four to six times. I'm making a lot more than that, okay? More than five times that amount in tech right now. But the thing is, I always thought I'd only make 70, 90K a year for the rest of my life because I thought, oh, again, I wasn't good enough. But I was more than good enough and I'm here and I'm gonna, I, and I believe for a fact within the next five years, I'm gonna make 400, 500K a year, if not even more, because I know how valuable I am and how much more value I could bring to a company. I'm gonna keep learning more technologies. I'm gonna be a better engineer, better developer advocate and moving up. Okay, so believe in yourself. Number three, I regret this and I don't regret it. I regret it because so many people, my family come up to me now, not so many people, but more people than before ask for money. So number three, I regret telling my family and my family members, like my, my distant relatives, my cousins, uncle, whatever, you, you name it, how much money I make. I regret it because, yeah, it's true. People come and ask me for money now. Now, I don't mind giving people money, but it's, I don't mind giving, helping people who were there for me. When I was homeless, right? When I was homeless, I would ask my dad for money when he gave me a penny. I would go to my mom. She was struggling too. They barely had enough money to eat. My mom gave me money, even if it meant she can't eat the next day to help me out. But now when my dad comes for me for money because he knows how much I make now, when he did, right? When he did come to me for money, I'd say no. Now when other people in my family come ask me money, some people will ask, Chris, can you give me 300 bucks? Help me buy this. Can you give me a thousand bucks? Help me buy this. I'll help some of them. I won't help all of them. But I'll tell you this, because I make more money, if I don't give money to these people to help them out in a situation, even if it's not a special situation, that relationship with that family member, broken. So when I start making half a million a year, when I start making even more money, even when it comes to my own parents, I'm not gonna tell them anymore. They can continue thinking I'm still making the money I make, but even as my income goes up, I'm not gonna tell anyone anymore. I regret it big time because it is sad how money can make and also break even more relationships than you make. It's unfortunate, that sucks. Okay, there's a lot more things I could talk about, but I only wanna talk about one more thing, which is number four, networking and building relationships in tech is so important. This industry is very small. One of the easiest ways to get a job in tech 
is by knowing people. I always try to help people get jobs at my companies that I work at, and so I always refer them. I've helped quite a few people get jobs, etc. And if you want to move to another place because you make friends who work at another company, as you build those relationships, it'll be easier to get new jobs in the future. But you know what? Last but not least, number five, I want to talk about this, which is really important. Tech has tried to change me. The culture in tech is very interesting. I'm more of a like a shy person who doesn't like to party, who, does, who doesn't care about partying. I don't care about going to a club. I don't care about getting drunk. Um, I don't care about smoking. I'm not saying that's everyone in tech, okay? It's not true. But I think being in DevRel, you hang around a lot of people who like to drink a lot. And you know people here and there that you know like to smoke. I mean, everyone likes to smoke, but that's not me. And one of the things that I am disappointed in myself in and proud of is when I get give in to particular situations where everyone's drinking and I'm the only one not. So I start drinking. When everyone's smoking, everyone's not. And so I almost gave in, right? I know everyone is smoking, that's not me. I'm not, and I'm saying this is not everyone tech, but this is when sometimes you do have to stand up for yourself and really just, yo, you don't need to be like everyone else. And I think for me, what I've learned was I really learned how to stand my ground without breaking relationships, right? Without making people feel bad. I feel there have been so many times when I don't drink and someone was like, why aren't you drinking? You should fit in with everyone else because you need to build relationships to develop an advocate. And I'm like, no, I don't need to drink. I don't need to drink alcohol and smoke weed with them to make them feel like I understand their problems. That does not relate. No, I'm not gonna do that. And so that's one of the proud things I've also done in my career as an endeavor so far is being able to like, you know what? I know everyone likes to drink when they hang out. I'll just get a Diet Coke and I'll say it's like something else, right? Whatever. Um, I'll get apple juice, <laughs> right? That's just me. I, I, I don't, you know, in high school and college, you know, when everyone did all that, that's just not me. I'm just a gamer guy. I like to game, live my life, and I don't need to do that to fit in. So anyway, these are the five things that I've learned while being tech over the last six years, which is crazy. My first YouTube video was what, five to six years ago and how I became a developer in three months. I'm here six years later. I'm nervous and excited at the same time to see where I will be um, year seven, year eight. Where will I be after 10 years? A lot of my friends are making 200K plus per year. All of us are. Right? A lot of us are. And a lot of us have about the same years of experience because I made a lot of friends my first year in tech. And I'm excited to see where we all be a couple years from now. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Love y'all. This is Krishan. This is the life of a web developer. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.